Hey guys, Christy here from The Soul Life, and today I'm gonna go through a few tips of what not to do when getting started with ClickUp. As a verified ClickUp consultant, I have so much experience working with multiple different companies, not to mention when I first started with ClickUp, and see the common mistakes that people tend to make. So in this video, I wanna go through what those are so you can hopefully avoid those hurdles. Or maybe if you're not just getting started in ClickUp, there are some simple tweaks that you can make to really enhance and optimize your setup, then this video is also for you. With that, let's dive in. So let's go through common ClickUp mistakes. The first one is related to status usage. Now I want to make two main points here and also say I definitely made this mistake in the beginning. It's pretty simple, but it'll clear up a lot of confusion. So the first point here is being consistent with your statuses across your workspace. So I don't mean every single list has the same statuses because they will differ depending on the type of project you're doing. But say you have client lists or projects that the statuses really do stay consistent. Well, often people will create lists and recreate that status set again, but maybe the naming is a little bit different. Maybe Maybe the colors are different and you really want to keep everything cohesive to make sure that yourself and your team visually gets the connection and always knows which statuses belong to which project type. It really just minimizes confusion. So for example, you could see in this client project list, I have the statuses to do in progress, review, needs edits, approved, complete, right? Well, if I go into this client named copy, very similar statuses, but now instead of to do, it says not started, and the review is blue instead of orange. Again, it's a very simple detail, but minimizes that confusion, and really, when everything is cohesive, you always know exactly what the next step is, right? So a super simple way to make sure things are consistent is either with the use of templates, right? If you create a project template or a client template, always use that template for new projects. So the custom fields, the statuses remain the same, or you can use status sets. So if you go into list settings, list statuses, then you can create these status templates so that, so this is the client status, right? If I go into this new client list, click the three dots, list settings, list statuses, then I could just click client statuses, save, and now they're going to be consistent. Now I'm just going to change not started to to do, and now it is consistent. And then the second tip I want to make about status usage is how to actually use the statuses. Some people will confuse statuses and drop down custom fields. Now, this is super common because if you look on the outside of a task, let's go ahead and add what the status drop down looks like. They look extremely similar, but definitely have differences. So typical statuses are going to be the ones that are actually attached to the task. So if I click in here, you'll see the status section in the top left where you'll be able to move the status and then mark it as complete as well. Whereas drop down custom fields are really meant to be more data points and categories. So for example, this is in a client template where maybe you're grouping the task by which category. So let me go ahead and hide this. But the status of that task will either be to do, in progress, review, needs edits, approved. Well, what's cool about this is you can add a drop down custom fields to note what category it's going to be. And then if you want to see it by categories instead of statuses, you can always click group by the custom field category. That's why a lot of people will use statuses as these categories because they want to visually see it broken down by category, but you can still accomplish the same thing by using this group by field. 
So I'll go ahead and move it back to status. You could see I actually created two views up here. One is by status and one is by category. Now, let me show you another example of this in our workflow mapping template available in our shop. This is where you can see this project is grouped by the drop down phase. So that way you could still visually see it in phase, but again, the status of that task is going to be to do in progress, review, needs edits, etc. So when you're thinking of should this be a status or a drop down, you want to think what are the actual status of the tasks in this list going to be that I can actually put those into versus what would really be a category for that task. One more example here I'll show you in the Instagram list. Maybe your statuses for content would be to create, in progress, ready to film, ready for review, ready to schedule, scheduled, published. Maybe some task lists you just have to do or complete or to do in progress complete. Where this drop down now shows a data point of what month this piece of content is going out in because then you can group it by the month. So those are two notes on common mistakes that we see with statuses and how to alleviate them. So the next thing I wanna talk about is going through the views at the top, right? So you can see on this Instagram list, I have a lot of views. So I have a status view, I have a month view, content table, task calendar, film calendar, publish calendar, et cetera, right? There's so many incredible examples of ways that you can add views at the top. But a common mistake we see is when people just dive into ClickUp, they tend to add all the views at the top when creating a new space, and that's gonna create a lot of digital clutter. Let me show you what that looks like by opening up this test space. You'll see here I have list, board, team, calendar, Gantt, timeline, activity, etc. That's overwhelming, personally, and you really don't need every single view right off the bat. The amazing thing about ClickUp is there are so many things you can do to customize it and view your information in a different way, but I always recommend starting simple. And then you can always add on as you go. So I always recommend when you're creating a new project template, always just start with a list view and then build on from there. So let me actually show you what I mean. If I'm creating a new space, I can name this test space. Whoops. And then click next. Then statuses, I always just start with to do and complete because I'm not sure what statuses I want for each project or each place in this template. I always turn off and then on all click apps. And then here is where I turn off board view and I only start with list view. After I review this space and create it, now you're going to see this just pops up with one list view and I can always add views as I need them. Now, another note about this, if you create a project template, say for a client project workflow. So for here, we have the list view, the client view. This is for a test, so you can ignore that. Calendar, Gantt, doc view. Once you create that template, now each project moving forward will have those views at the top. But what's great about this is they won't be automatically added to every single list you create in that space. That's why we say when you're creating a space, just add list view and then go from there. Once you create that template, then you can have that for every single project moving forward. Tip number three. So what we also see is really creating digital clutter in your hierarchy. It's people creating too many spaces, folders, and lists. For example, a lot of times we see when people have the client space, they will have one folder for every single client and multiple lists underneath that folder. So instead of having this workflow template, right, this would be one client project. 
where it's grouped by phase one, two, three, and four. Instead, they'll have the client name with task list one, two, three, four, et cetera, trying to group it in those different categories. But like I mentioned in the first tip about status usage, you can really make this list be grouped by how you want by utilizing custom fields. So we recommend when you're creating these templates to think, does this have to be multiple lists or can I boil this down into one list and utilize custom fields to break it out into different phases or categories? If you find yourself having folders with multiple lists and each list really only has say like five to eight or 10 tasks, typically I would think that you can condense that. Not every single time, but just think a little bit to yourself when creating these hierarchies. Is this too much, too little? How can I really optimize and condense this to reduce the digital clutter? And then tip number four to wrap it all up, a common mistake we see is not setting yourself or your team members up for success by creating everything views or a dashboard where you or your team member could really see just what you have to do. ClickUp is amazing. It literally has everything that we do at DeSilva Life in our ClickUp so we can see each project and each client and our team members and what everyone has to do. But we don't want everyone to have to be clicking into it, each individual place to see what's on their calendar. We want them to have one place that they could go and just filter out everything due to them, get an idea of what's due today, what's coming up, if there's anything overdue. So there are two things that we do to really streamline this. On the everything view, we make sure each person has an everything view calendar so they can see on their calendar what's coming down the pipeline. For these calendars, we create a calendar view and then we have a filter that the assignee is that person. Now you can create this for them if you have a small team. If you have a larger team, we recommend having them create this and then making it a private view so that not everyone has access to all of these calendars. Then another few things we do is we make sure to show subtasks, to also show priority, and then tags. Those are the main things we recommend having on this calendar view. And then we love to favorite that. So we have our team members favorite it so they can always view it up here. As soon as you start your day, you're going to your calendar or your dashboard. So that's the calendar. Then let's take a look at the team member dashboard. This dashboard has multiple list widgets where it's filtering out what's due today, what's overdue, and then what's upcoming this week. So to create this, you would just add a card that would be a task list. You would name this due today, overdue, and due this week. Select all locations, definitely include subtasks, and then you're gonna do a couple filters for each widget. Those filters would be the assignee is that specific person. For the due today one, the due date is today. For the overdue one, the due date is overdue. And then for the due this week, it's due date is this week. And then the difference between the due this week and the today and overdue is this one is actually grouped by the due date instead of the status. So then they could see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. Another super cool trick is if you want your calendar to show up on this dashboard as well, you can go back to your calendar. So let me go ahead and favorite this to make sure that it's gonna be right there. You can go to your calendar, click the three dots and copy this link. And then when you go back to your dashboard, you can click add card and then search embed. Click custom embed, write my calendar, and then embed this link in here. Then when you add this card, then you'll be able to see your calendar on your dashboard as well. 
So now here's my calendar so I can have that embedded on my dashboard. You can make this the size that you need to show up. And then your team members are really going to have everything in one place so they don't feel overwhelmed trying to click into a million places and feel like they don't know exactly what they have to do or if anything is lingering. So those are the top four mistakes that we see. I hope this video was helpful for you. Whether you're just diving into ClickUp or you have experience, really being able to know these main things and how to alleviate them. So I hope that video was helpful for you and just gaining some tips on what to avoid when setting up your ClickUp. If this video was helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because we have so many other ClickUp tutorials that could be really helpful for you. Also make sure to check out our freebies page at desilvalife.com slash freebies if you want to get some resources in setting up your ClickUp from ground zero. But maybe you're not a newbie and you really just need additional training. Maybe you are, no matter what, our ClickUp course could be a great fit for you to really get that deep dive understanding of how to set up ClickUp. I'll make sure to drop all the links in the description below if you want to check it out. And make sure to drop a comment and let me know what tip was most helpful for you. With that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.